In Acts 2, 38, it says, repent and be baptized. That means you got to turn away from sin if you want to receive God's gift, which is the Holy Spirit. Repent. Turn away from sin. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You want a new heart. For you to enter heaven, you got to have a new heart. You cannot have that same heart. Right? You want a new heart, right? You want a new spirit. That's what you want. God, when he comes to give you his Holy Spirit, he's going to give you a new heart. That's what you read about in Ezekiel 36. You get a, you want a new heart. For God to give you a new heart, you got to get rid of your sins. You got to turn away from sin if you want a new heart. If you want God to give you a new heart and take away that heart of sin from you, you got to turn away from sin. You got to make that decision. It is your call. It's your call. You decide. You make that decision. You take you take charge. If there's anything that you can take charge of right now, it's that. It's your soul. You make that decision. Most of the time, people, people try to take charge of other people. That's a waste of time. Stop wasting your time. You know, I'm trying to uh, 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 taking charge of other people. Take charge of your own situation. Take charge of yourself. Because in the end, if there's anything you can control, it's that. It's you. You know, it's you. If there's anybody that God has given you power to control, it's you. It's you. If there's any, if there's anything that you can say, well, I can control is myself. It's you because you can control. You can say, hey, I am not going to be sleeping with this person because I'm not married to that person. So when you choose to not willfully sin, then you have made the decision to say, you have made the decision to receive the spirit of God. And when you make that de the decision and you go into prayer and fasting, you start to pray to God, then I'm telling you, God is faithful. God is a faithful God and He's faithful and it's true to His word. Like He said in the Bible, if you repent, it's true. You get rid of your sins. Make a new heart. Get a new spirit. And then He will give you His Holy Spirit. So that's very important to know that to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God talks about that in the Bible, that you got to get rid of your sins. You know, those things you can choose not to do. You cannot keep gossiping and you want God to give you His Holy Spirit. You know, gossiping and slender, you know, that, that grieves the Holy Spirit of God. You think God wants to come close to, to, to sin? He doesn't like sin. He hates sin. You know, so when, you, when you're asking for God's Holy Spirit, you're asking God to come closer to you. You're asking God to come near to you. You're asking God to come and live inside of you. And He doesn't live in sin. God hates sin. When you read the book of Isaiah 59, the Bible says he, he, uh, uh, that separates us from God. So you want God to come and dwell in you and baptize. You want Jesus to baptize you with his Holy Spirit. And the, yet the Bible tells you that God is separated from sin. So that means you have to separate from sin. If you want the Lord to come and dwell in you, you have to separate from sin. Separate from sin. Separate. Get a new heart. Get a new spirit. The Bible says if you, if you get rid of your sins, you will be receiving. God will give you a new heart and a new spirit. Because I, I just read that to you. Ezekiel chapter 18. I'm going to read it again. A lot of people, we keep wondering. How are we, how we going to get a new heart? I want a new heart, Lord. How can I get a new heart? How can I get a new spirit? The Bible tells you how. I, Ezekiel 18. Get rid of your sins. And I'm talking about willful sinning. There are things that you can choose not to do. There are a lot of sins you can choose not to do. You can choose not to watch movies. Those filthy movies that is coming out of Hollywood. The Hollywood filthiness that is um, uh, corrupting the nation. That's why you see the world is the way it is right now. Because of all these e movies that they keep, people keep watching. You, you, they watch movies where people are killing people. And you look at the society, that's what you see. What you see in the movies, that's what you see in the, in the society. People killing people. You see in the movies a lot of sexual sin. People are, are having sex in the movies all the time, smoking in the movies all the time, and you know, and then that's, they glorify these things, they glamorize these things, and you look at the world, that's what the world is doing. In the movies, you see people dressing unholy, dressing naked, they're naked all the time. That's what you see outside. People dressing unholy, they're not dressing in the fear of God, you know, covering their bodies with the long skirts for the women. They're not doing these things like that in the movies. In the movies, they they dressing the, they, the, the, the devil knows how to get customers. The devil knows how to get people to fall into sin. He knows how to get people. So he will put those actresses in there, in, in those clothes, in those clothes. And then you got, uh, you got men, married men, on their, uh, uh, married men, uh, you, you got them watching those movies and they have their wife right next to them and they're watching this woman that's that in this dress 
And then they're lusting at that woman and their wife is right next to them. That's evil. This is evil. We need to come out of immoral movies. You want to receive the Holy Spirit? Repent. Stop watching these immoral movies. Stop listening to the music of this world. The music that make you wanna make you wanna uh, uh, dance on on holy dance, dance on holy dance. The music that make you wanna that make you think of of of, of sexual sin that make you wanna curse. The movies, the, the the music where you hear the people cursing all the time, all the time. The rap music, you know. We can't be listening to these things and say we want to receive the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is exactly what He is, holy. The in the Bible, God says, "My name is holy." Don't forget that He's holy. You want God to come in your life, but you don't want to live a holy life. God is holy. You want God to be in your life, be holy. Get rid of your sins. Turn away from sex outside of marriage. Turn away from lying. Turn away from slander. Turn away from gossiping. Turn away from backbiting. Have love for your neighbor. One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is love. Love, love. You got to love your neighbor. If you love your neighbor, you're not going to be talking, uh, you're not going to be slandering about them. You're not going to be judging them when they're not there. You saying things about them you're not supposed to say. You're not going to be. You're going to speak things that edify, things that build people up, not things that destroy people. Sometimes you can say things about people; it destroys their spirit. You destroy them with what you say. You know, it's not our job. We, we didn't come into this world to. Do, we didn't make anybody, so we didn't create nobody. So, so why should we destroy anybody? We did not come to destroy. Only the devil came to destroy. He came to rob, steal, and destroy. So the Bible tells us we got to speak to edify people, to build them up. Build them up. Help them in the faith. Help them to grow. Not to tear them down. And, you know, we're not supposed to do these things. You see? So receive the Holy Spirit. Seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But in the process, remember, God is a holy God. God is a holy God. You got to turn away from sin if you want to receive the baptism. You got to believe in the word of God. You got to believe in Jesus. You got to believe this God that you're asking to come into your life, to come and live in you is a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's holy. Without sin, he's blameless. And then the other thing I want to mention is that this teaching I'm telling you, is there's a lot of it. There's a lot of things in it. Um, there's, there's other things also. The other thing I want to say is that there's willful sinning. Willful sinning, things that you can, you willfully do, that you can choose not to do. You can use your willpower to not do those things. Willful sinning. But there's also certain sins that's not willful, meaning like the sins of the heart. Like you can just sit right there and all of a sudden you have this evil thought. Bah! Just hit you upside the head. Like, oh my God, I cannot believe I just thought this evil thing about my neighbor or about my friend or about my, my, my whoever. Right then, right then and there, the word of God. Right there, just 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 happen. That's an evil evil thought. That's sin, right? That makes you unclean. Evil thoughts make us unclean. That's not willful sinning. That's like it just came to you. You didn't ask for it to come, but it comes anyway. Sometimes the, the hatred, certain things in the heart, unforgiveness, bitterness, certain things come into the heart. Sometimes, well, bitterness sometimes comes because of sin too. Sometimes we do things that leads to that. But what I'm saying is that there are things that come to you. In the mind, like evil thoughts, certain things come in the um, in the mind. It's not willful. Like you didn't choose it; they just come. So now, what I'm saying to you is that, what do you do about those things? That's why you need the Holy Spirit. That's why you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit to purify your heart. The Holy Spirit will come and purify your heart. But you gotta do your part by turning away from sin, by repenting, asking God for forgiveness, and repenting and turning away from it, from your sins. The things that you know you can change, change them. So the God can come and change the things in you that you can change. There are all things that God gives you power to change. You have the power whether you go outside and go to the club. But thank God for that. God, God closed down the clubs now with the with the uh, with the coronavirus. <laughs> God has closed these places down. The the, the 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 houses and the temples of sin. God has closed these things down with the coronavirus. You know, that's how you know this is a, this is from God. This is not from the devil. Because a lot of the places, a lot of the th things that shut down were things that 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 the devil was using to to take a lot of people to hell. You know, the the the, the um the, the gambling sites, the gambling sites, the 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 prost prostitution sites, the sites where uh, um the go go clubs where you got all the women they're naked and then men they're just throwing their money at them. You know, you know, all these evil things that you see going on right now. 
A lot of places, things that God shut down, He shut it down because God wants the people to to change their ways. He wants people to come out of these things. He wants them to come out of these these things, come out of these lifestyles. The life. That's why He closed some of these um, uh, stores, the liquor stores, closed because a lot of people are, are, are going to sin because of these places, these houses of these temples of the devil, the the, the alcoholic places. You know. You know, so now people can come out of the, the drunkenness and all these things. So it is time to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. So now let me read about the things of the heart. The sins of the heart. Because that's one of the ways that you know that you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because only the Holy Spirit can come in you and change your heart. And give you a new heart. But I've already told you that for you to get a new heart, you got to first repent. You got to get rid of your sins first. Get rid of your sins so God can come and give you a new heart. Get a new heart by getting rid of your sins and God will come and change you and give you his Holy Spirit. But now, let me talk about the sins of the heart. The evil thoughts. That's sin. Evil thoughts is sin. It's sin. So let's let's read Matthew. Matthew, it makes people unclean. That's how you know it's sin. So Matthew uh, 15. That's one of the reasons why we need the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit comes in you, He changes those things. He removes those things from your heart. All these sins, He removes them. He changes us. You know, that's why we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 15. In Matthew 15, you will find that Jesus is talking about the heart. You know, the Bible says, Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. For without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So, when you're holy, you will see the Lord. You will be able to see God if you're holy. In other words, you will be able to see heaven. But, and, but, and, and when you read Matthew 5, verse 8, you find that in Matthew 5, verse 8, Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So that lets you know that if you want to see the kingdom of God, if you want to see heaven, part of the holiness, part of holiness, especially the holiness is in your heart. Your heart got to be holy. Your heart got to be holy. In other words, your heart got to be clean. If you want to see God, your heart got to be clean. You cannot have a heart that has malice. You cannot have a heart that has lust. You cannot have a heart that has unclean thoughts. All these things that we, we have that's evil, bitterness, you know, um, strife, you know, uh, uh, blasphemy. A lot of evil stuff that dwells in the heart. Uh, it got to be cleansed from our hearts. Our heart got to be cleansed. You know, our heart got to be pure if you want to see God. The Bible tells you, those who see God are those that are pure in heart. So our heart got to be clean. So that means when you worship the Lord, you have to always remember your heart got to be clean. Your heart got to be pure. And you only receive that, one, you got to get rid of your sins. Those things that you can change, change them. Get rid of them. Get rid of your sins. Repent. And then the God will come and ask God for the baptism. Get baptized in water. Pray to God. Repent. And ask God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in your heart, then He's going to give you power now to walk in the Spirit. Because to, to be holy, to, to do what you could not do without Him living inside of you. So Matthew, Matthew uh, 15. We need to pay attention to these things. We think we're going to enter the kingdom of God and still have an evil heart. It's not going to work. Matthew 15. This is what Jesus says, verse 17. Do not yet, do not yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought. The Lord Jesus says, Do you don't do you not understand that whatever comes into the mouth and it goes out of the, the, the goes out of the backside, it goes out of the tukus, and then it is destroyed. Then the Lord Jesus says, But those things which proceeded out of the mouth, those things that come out of the mouth, they are the things that come from the heart. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. That's what makes a man unclean is the things that's in the heart and that comes out of the mouth. For out of the heart, this is what Jesus says, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. You see, evil thoughts make a man unclean. And when we have, when, if we have evil thoughts, the Bible is basically telling you, don't, don't speak evil thoughts. Don't give them power. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Don't give them power by, by speaking them. Don't give gossip. Don't give power with you. Don't give, uh, don't speak life. Don't speak, don't speak death. You know, it says, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, 
You see, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. So the Lord Jesus Christ is telling you that your heart got to be pure. Your heart got to be clean. Because there are things in the heart that can make a man unclean. Evil thoughts make a man unclean if it is in the heart. Murder or hatred make a man unclean if it is in the heart. Adulteries and lust makes a man unclean if it is in the heart. Fornication, if it is in the heart, makes a man unclean. Thefts, if it be in the heart, make a man unclean. False witness, if it be in the heart, make a man unclean. Blasphemies, if it be in the heart, make a man unclean. The Lord Jesus Christ is telling you, get a new heart. That's what he's saying. Get a new heart. And the Bible tells you how to get a new heart. You got to get a new spirit. Get the Holy Spirit. Get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Seek God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, Jesus says that in the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Be encouraged. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Verse 5. Which of you, Jesus is saying, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. <laughs> Verse 8. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, in other words, because of his boldness, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, the Lord Jesus says unto you, the Lord Jesus says unto you, ask. In other words, ask God for the Holy Spirit. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Go into prayer. Go to your, into your prayer closet, especially now. This is the perfect time with the coronavirus. This is the perfect time to be in your prayer closet. This is the perfect time to be seeking the Lord in prayer. You know, this is the perfect time to be in prayer. You know, and asking the Lord. You know, and and in asking the Lord, pray, Lord, please give me the baptism of your Holy Spirit. You see what the Bible says? The Lord Jesus says. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he, or will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, Will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then being evil, if you being then evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? The Lord is telling you, ask him for the Holy Spirit. Ask Jesus for the Holy Spirit. He's asking, he's telling you, ask God for the Holy Spirit. Ask him for the Holy Spirit. Ask because you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus tells you, ask, ask, ask. You need the Holy Spirit. You cannot worship God without the Holy Spirit. The scripture says in John chapter 4, verse 24, the Lord God Almighty, God the Father, His, His Spirit, and He's looking for the true believers, those who will worship Him in truth and in spirit. You need the Spirit of God to worship God in truth and in spirit. And this Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, have to be in you. That's the mystery that, I'm, that the, the Bible tells you. It's a mystery, but now God has revealed it to us. He has revealed it to us through his apostles, through the, the Bible, that the mystery about the kingdom of God, that's the mystery that you need to get a hold of. Once you, you know this mystery, then you, have, you now, under, now you, you, you understand how to get to heaven. And the mystery is this, Christ in you. In other words, the Holy Spirit in you. You've got to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when Christ is in you, then you are, you are Christ's ambassadors. Then you are the children of Christ. You are the children of the light. Then you can walk in righteousness and holiness. Then your heart is going to be clean. All these things that the Lord says, the evil thoughts, the, the lust, 
the, the all these evil stuff that we have in the heart, when Christ is in you, He's gonna get he's, he's gonna condemn those things in the flesh. He's gonna set us free from these things. And another thing I want you to know also, Galatians chapter 5, verse 5. Don't uh, I want you to know this thing also because the devil sometimes he be uh he be lying to people and make people lose hope. And I don't and God doesn't want us to lose hope. God wants us to have hope of salvation. Continue to carry wear the helmet of sal of the hope of salvation. Put on your head the helmet of the hope of salvation. Do not do do not be do not despair. Have the hope of salvation. When you receive the Holy Spirit, even after you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God still has to work on you. There's still uh, there's still a work that has to be done in you. That's why the Bible says, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. When the Holy Spirit comes into you, He begins to cleanse you. He's cleansing you. He's working, he's working things out for you. He's working out this, the salvation of Christ in you. Now, Galatians chapter 5 tells you that. Because sometimes, just in case somebody think, well, when, I received the, when they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden, uh, they're completely made. They're made perfect right away at that moment. And everything is said and done. They're perfect. They're ready. Because now they've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, with the Holy Spirit, through the Spirit, we wait for the hope of righteousness. In other words, when you have the Holy Spirit in you, you are now, you still got to wait for righteousness to come to you. You still got to wait. It will come to you, but you still got to wait. You know, you still got to wait for, for, for righteousness. That means you got to still work it out through the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is in you, He's going to work righteousness in you. He's going to work it out in you, perfecting you, perfecting you, perfecting you, until He makes you into the full image of Christ. But in the process, you've, you've, in the process, God has already given you power. In the process, He has already given you power to overcome your sin, to overcome this world. And God can also use you also. But we have to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And most importantly, let me wrap this up by saying, there's nothing more important to God than obedience. Obedience. Obedience to the Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, we gotta be we gotta obey. We gotta obey the Holy Spirit. We gotta be faithful. And then when you're faithful, then God also will um, will work things out. He will always work things out when we're faithful. The most important thing in Christianity, you know, most important thing of course is faith and is love. Loving one another, loving loving God and faith and 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 and, uh, and peace and hope and all the fruits of the spirit. But God wants our heart. He wants faith. He wants us to be faithful and obedient. Obedience. Obedience. Humility. Um, so may the Lord bless you all uh, as you prepare for the coming of the Messiah. Shalom.